Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have just uh, started the session. So I was just reminding about the assignment that is due by next week. I hope all the groups are working on it and in the process of completing. Can I make any uh, assistance here? Do you need any support? How many groups are yet to visit the factories or the organization? We have visited. Then uh, it's a matter of just putting the information in one uh, report. Finalize it. Okay? Hopefully, it will be able to read it in the next few days. But can I create a uh, uh, sufficient link on the uh, LMS? So the deadline was uh, the deadline said that was. Uh, Next Sunday. Right. Last week uh, we started to talk about uh, this area. Uh, another important operations management decision. As I can remember, we complete the first few slides. Yeah, we talked about the first few. Uh, I think uh, the outcomes. What package layout is. And what layout planning means. Right? And then who involved in this and all. So after that, uh, we have further discussed where uh, <coughs> what are the, <coughs> the layout types. There are four. <coughs> and then in addition to that, there are these three, these three. Plus, uh, here in this slide, we try to identify, uh, we try to identify uh, for what type of processes, what type of layouts are technically possible. So for manufacturing processes, different layout types that I explained them, we have understood. Then for service process types, what are the technical possible layout <coughs> So let me ask you simple questions. What do you mean by layout plan? That's it layout. Yeah. Operations facility layout. How do you describe it? So he can then he can again done anything. Right. So you should have a simple answer for that. We spend the time at least go through a few slides and tell me what you understand by layout plan. We have an unfair. I'll bring uh, a bottle of water and in that time you can find out what layout plan is, facility layout plan, and what we mean by planning the layout. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, could you find what a facility layout is? In simple terms, how you describe it? Don't expect such a simple question in the exam paper. Right? You should be able to answer more advanced questions than that. What do you mean by facility layout? Okay, arrangement of operations resources within an operation structure. So it could be a factory inside the factory. How different operations resources like the production line or different departments, production steps or machinery, right? Physically arranged within the factory. Is what we call the facility layout. That has to be done in a smooth manner so that we can smoothly conduct operations, home operations. So, as in services like retail shops, banks, hospitals, or any other service premises, they need to arrange the resources within the service premises in such a way that services can be performed. Those operations can be performed efficiently. That is a little different compared to product facilities because in service facilities, both service providers and customers interact. Like at a restaurant, or a bread bank, a supermarket. Right? So customers come in and they go through the facility so that the layout should facilitate smooth flow, traffic flow in service premises. So we're talking about how to arrange that. And coding, we have identified the four basic types of layouts. And I said there are three or four or five other types. So we are going to talk more about these four. So what are those uh, layout types we have identified? There is one called fixed position layout. We don't know their characteristics. We are see them and all, but still we know the name now. Fixed position. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, the second one that uh, we mostly consider process oriented layout, also known as functional layout. That is the second one. You're going to discuss it. Have you discussed it? No. Have okay. at this process oriented layout? Did, did we discuss? Yes or no? Process oriented layout, and it starts. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Okay. We have started to talk about process oriented layout, then uh, the characteristics of that, and then uh, um, where we see them, and then design techniques. Did I explain you? Layout design techniques? No, not yet. All right. We can start from there then. And then, that, in addition to that, we have uh, uh, product oriented layouts. We need to understand what it is, its main characteristics, and then of course design techniques as well. Uh, in addition to them, we have hybrid layout. We should also know the characteristics of hybrid layouts, where we can use them often. So likewise. So uh, you can start it from there. In addition to that, we have these uh, three layout types also. What we call office layouts in office setups, like Many of you are working in office environment. Office staff to allocate the building spaces for office staff to carry out their office related work. Retail outlets that mainly the places where products are displayed for customers to come and see and select accordingly. So how to arrange such arrangements like supermarkets, book, bookshops, 
for uh, showrooms for retail purposes. So they are the day out arrangements are a little different because customers should come and see the product. Product exposure is very important there. And they, they have to arrange it in an attractive manner to attract more customers. In addition to that, the warehouse layout, you know, uh, uh, phases used for warehousing, storage products. Have you been to a warehouse? At least for auditing purpose, have you been to? Those inventory calculations and all physical verifications and all you have been to, right? So you may have seen spacious buildings, tall buildings, right? Where they have used different areas for different product categories and using storing techniques, they have stored different products at different places. The main concern is how efficiently they can store the products and maintain those stocks uh, uh, appropriately. And then uh, uh, we call it retrieval. Taking products back and sending them to the production or maybe the outlets and all. So storing and retrieving in an efficient manner is the concern here. Such we call a uh, warehouse layout. So whatever it is, the purpose is designing such layouts in such a way operations can be smoothly performed. So uh, we have uh, discussed the characteristics of uh, product layout, it seems, right? Then uh, we understood who is involved in this decision, design decision, who is involved in. Yeah, operations managers and experts. Good if you have written them down because we discussed, you should have written them down there. Uh, maybe operations managers plus design experts plus who else? Technology experts, uh, industrial engineers of the relevant field because one might think, especially non operations managers like you all, huh? you all are not operations managers mostly. In the factories and all. So you might think in our organization it's the HR. No? The HR involved in most of these decisions, so they can do something. Then in some setup, especially in services like offices and all, they may involve in designing where to place which department and all. But in factories and in main other services, HR can do a little. It requires experts opinion. Industrial engineers and various other design experts, we call them interior designers and all. Their opinions, their recommendations are highly essential. That is how such decisions are made. And for us to understand, there are these four different layout types. We began with the process oriented layout and identified the main characteristics of it. Didn't we? Within. Then process oriented layouts, also known as functional layouts. I need your support. You will have to go through, check, right, and then do some activities with me to understand it, uh, at least in a simple manner, right, so that you can answer all the questions coming from this area. So, uh, check whether you can understand it. Now, Functional layouts or process oriented layouts. A typical <coughs> example would look like this inside of a big thing. This is the building, right? This is the building that has allocated into different departments. Within that department, same resources are grouped. We call it similar resources grouped together into departments. Right. So within uh, grinding department, only the grinding machine. Lead department, lead machine. Building departments, building So like uh, the building is divided among different uh, departments. Right. And within a department, similar resources are grouped. So that is the characteristic. Similar resources or similar processes are located together. That is the main characteristic. 
because then they can make sure those general purpose equipment can be used for a different procedure requirements. So now, uh, what we process in operations? It could be materials, what we products, or customers or information that we process, right? So such will go through the process. Several example in manufacturing, what are being processed? It's materials, products being produced. Assume that they got an order for a product. It requires a manufacturing process like this, a particular order. It should go through the three steps within the lathe department, and then one step here in the milling department, coming to drilling, one processing, and coming to grinding, I'll go back to milling, and then come back to drilling, and then painting, and then bring fish. So that is how it goes. Hello? I hope you can understand it. Now, assume that they got another order. And uh, that product requires another process, different process, different route, like this. According to the product, its processing requirements are different, and it goes through different routes. Can you understand it? So such an arrangement is called process of the layout, so that. Different products, customized products, can be produced when the layout arrangement is done according to this. Now, do you remember where we can use it? Functional layouts. In case of manufacturing, what type of manufacturing process is, it is used? Hello, I need your support. What type of uh, processes uh, uh, layout type is recommended? Uh, functional type is recommended. Either for jobbing, you know, that we discussed earlier. Variety of customized products. Or oh, batch processing, you know. Select a few variety of products in medium volume. That is where functional layout. So that means we should be able to produce different outputs, customize out. Ah, for that purpose, this arrangement type, this layout arrangement perfectly matches. That is why. So this is a machine shop. So likewise, you may see uh, some other examples where uh, the same characteristics can be seen. Hospitals. It's a typical example for this. You recall your memory and how the stream within the hospital uh, area divided among sections from OPD to various different uh, scanning, uh, diagnosis uh, areas to wards to surgery theaters. Departments. Areas operating in similar manner grouped together. Why? Different patients have different requirements. They will go through different groups. So that is part. Okay, at supermarkets, we see it. And then, of course, uh, if you go to the kitchen area of a restaurant, restaurant chain, if you go. Like KFC, Pizza Hut, or any other restaurant. So, the kitchen area, so you may see they have arranged different resources according to this principle. Go to storing area, all the products are stored. Preparation of the tables are arranged separately. And then the washing basins, and then other areas where the cooking taking place. Because they have to prepare different menu items. Different understanding. When we need to produce different outputs, it's easier, it's more uh, convenient to arrange layouts like functional or process oriented. What is the principle? Similar resources together.
similar resources together. Now, even in factories, maybe producing automobiles or uh, yeah, or any other product, at the initial stage of it, they need to produce different components. We call them component factories. Then automobiles may require different uh, components like uh, body parts, main chassis, doors, buffers, separate things. So when it comes to engine, different parts of engine should be manufactured. And for such, these type of layouts are used. A factory producing engine parts may have the uh, same uh, uh, layout. We can uh, watch one or two videos a little later. That is fair. Now, uh, what is the, this? The layout of a library. Now, can you see uh, the characteristics here? Sections. Similar resources grouped together. Similar resources grouped together. So uh, here comes the recommend section. Permanent references, okay. Study area. Lending section. E resources. And periodicals. Reserve collection. So that's right. Because users, depending on their requirements, they may go through different sections. So that the layout should be useful. Can you understand it? So this is a typical functional layout, process oriented layout. Understand it? You can compare it with other layout types we, uh, we identify later. Understand for operations how efficient uh, or inefficient, how flexible uh, for the uh, operations. Other key characteristics of process layouts are mentioned here in slide number 18. And quickly go to this is the big topic. We'll have a process more information and quickly think with me. My, my request is don't delay it. You may be, no, no, I will just listen to you. I can understand it later at home. No, you don't. Think with me, try to understand it with me. That is more common. But in process of the layout, we see general purpose uh, resources and uh, flexible resources open. Uh, and such facilities are more labor intensive than uh, automated, capital intensive, labor intensive, labor intensive, or workers, laborers are used. Hello, more workers or laborers are used. Mm. Lower capital intensity and lower automation. Uh, processing rates are slower, that means the speed of production is slow. You know why? Different products may go through different routes. Sometimes when I uh, say uh, a product has come to the thing, a product has come to a, a main department from lay, but a previous order is being processed there, so machine is already occupied. They have to stop there until the machine is wake up. Then not they could post. So there can be certain uh, machines or departments, high demand machines. You have to wait until uh, you have more available machines, department. Processing rates are slower. As a result, processing time is longer. So processors are more inefficient. In other words, less efficient. Processes are less efficient. However, uh, we call it uh, uh, different products can be produced. That is the main advantage here. Different products or different services can be produced. We call it flexibility. So, try 
I think that was how we are. In uh, process layout, we, we can experience more flexibility. In process layout, we can experience more flexibility. Maybe, what we can. Uh, different outputs can be produced. A variety of outputs, customized outputs can be produced. General purpose equipment are located here. Recall your memory, uh, you as a maybe as a patient or maybe as a guardian, you have uh, visited to uh, hospitals right, for different purposes. So, you from the registration area to various other sections, you have taken your patient each time, different routes. Because uh, uh, treatment requirements are different. And at the same time, you may have good experiences. Some hospitals have designed their layout in a more attractive, more efficient manner. Maybe even government, government hospitals. Close to the uh, 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 patient registration, right? they locate what? Close to the patient registration. Now, where the patient registration area is located, usually in an hospital. Close to the bus, close to the main gate, and then of course immediately close to that OPD system. Plus, the scanning area, X-ray area, and all the other diagnosis taking place because immediately such uh, 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 diagnosis should be completed. Sometimes even before uh, entering into the boards. And what are the other other areas, uh, other other sections we have seen close to the registration desk, the hospital, emergency treatment unit. Very good, because patients who are coming for emergency treatment should be directly forwarded to the emergency treatment. And then of course accident rooms. Have you seen accident? Because immediately they should be taken for the treatment. Accident uh, uh, holds. Very much close to the entrance. And there are uh, other sectors like surgeries, maybe uh, wards, right, and pharmacy, and all the other things. Because different patients have different requirements. If they are in a nice state, uh, they can provide a variety of services. However, this is the main problem here in taxi personal and process layouts. What is it? We call it material handling costs are higher. Material handling costs are higher. Can you understand that? Now, what do you mean by material handling? Inside the factory, products being produced should be taken from machine to machine. Departs onto another department. And that is expensive. They'll have to use uh, uh, workers, manual material handling. Have you seen workers carrying work in progress from one machine to another? Where have you seen? Where have you seen? You must start visiting places and observe uh, for it. If you have been to a press, printer, from machine to machine, they take, right? When they complete one uh, uh, printing step, the, the entire only is taken from that to another machine, and from that to the cutting section, then to the packaging section. So, manually handling it, they can manage. Otherwise, for material handling, what they use? In factory and all? In material handling, what they use? They use some equipment and machines, vehicles, like forklifts. Have you seen? Have you seen? So, machines are used to uh, transport work in progress from one machine to another uh, or one department to another because every time different orders may go through different routes. Material handling cost is huge here. So, 
when we design process oriented layouts, that is one technical constraint we have. One main objective uh, that is now, as you see here in uh, these two slides, when it comes to uh, process oriented layouts, what is the main objective? Manage varied uh, material flow for each product right? and manage the material handling cost. Thank you. Keep it. Keep that in your mind. Uh, we'll quickly discuss the designing part so you will, will understand. Right? Material handling cost are higher than the other details. Uh, scheduling resources would be more complex. Scheduling workflow is more complex. Scheduling. <coughs> That means uh, allocating machine, allocating workers, we call it scheduling. The other thing can be the joint. So, uh, scheduling resources have been more difficult, more challenging. Start thinking from operation side, right? Otherwise, you don't understand it. Have you been to vehicle repair centers? At least, maybe after an accident. Have you been to? No. I have been to uh, several such places as a customer. Uh, maybe luckily, still uh, a few accidents, I mean, minor accidents, but still I have seen uh, how different services and vehicle maintenance uh, operations are taken place. If you have visited such place, you may see the, for different type of operations, different sections are located. Like for uh, engine repairs, one area, and some other running repairs, some other area. Painting, body painting, and with some others, separate other area. Have you seen? So they get orders, they get vehicles, damaged vehicles for different requirements. So what they have to do? The operations manager there, then have to direct them to relevant section and allocate workers. Uh, machines for each vehicle's required. Can you understand it? So that is what we call scheduling. That is more complex. They might tell you, okay, material in the middle. Why? There are already a few vehicles being processed there. Yeah. So we'll make it after two days. So we we'll have to park the vehicle and move. Because they're already uh, uh, committed to some product. Have you seen that? So, resource allocation, uh, workflow is more complex in such an arrangement. Even you may see it uh, at press or printer. We have only one machine of this thing. So, so you'll have to wait for a few hours, one or two days, because still one or two orders are going out. In process oriented layout, the space requirements are higher. Space required uh, for departments, more space is required, and at the same time, you may have seen more spacious passages they maintain within the factory, within the service uh, uh, facility. Spacious uh, passageway, ISOs, staircases. Can you guess the reason why? In spacious passages, they'll have to transport things from machine to machine, department to department, the manually or forklifts. So they have to maintain more spacious passages. If you go to hospitals, you may see we are designed hospitals. It's a have you been yard for hospital? Hospital. That is designed somewhere in the 1980s, I guess. Right? 1980s, that has been designed. But to see the international standards from those days, you can see the spacious passages, right? And more spacious uh, areas for uh, uh, waiting and all. Why? They'll have to handle different patients, medical equipment, 
bits. So uh, even the there are phases, and then of course passageways, and the links are all most spacious. Why? Ah, they need to transfer over. And it's the material handling. In this case, patient handling. Can you guess it? Uh, can you understand it now? Right. We call such layouts process oriented layouts. The main characteristic is similar resources grouped together. Before moving to other uh, uh, layout types, let's quickly identify design techniques for this uh, with the limited time available. Because sometimes in the exams, you will be given such simple uh, uh, calculations. And moving to uh, slide number uh, 30. Quickly understand the design techniques used for uh, process oriented. I need your support. We together should quickly go through these slides. How many can I say? I am going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, but then I'm going to talk about something else. Let it. Me. Now, my dear, now I am going to say that. Mama, I am going to say that. No, I am not. That's it. I am not going to say that. So, designing techniques. Now, uh, here the concern is to uh, allocate the building space among different departments in a way that the material handling cost is. Minimized. That is the purpose. That is the objective. Now it depends on material handling cost depends on two things. One is uh, how many loads, how many transactions between different departments, right? And the other one is called uh, how long it goes, the distance. Considering such layout should be designed. And for that, there are two main techniques recommended. Let's quickly start the first one uh, that we call block diagram technique. And later I will quickly show you the second one, very deep diagram. But coming to block diagramming, that is a very simple technique uh, uh, when we handle it manually. When we handle it manually, that's a very simple technique. Uh, most of the complicated layouts cannot be handled manually. Now there are some advanced solutions for that, like computer solutions, computer uh, software solutions. Right? But let's quickly identify how manual, manually uh, layouts can be finalized. Now, this technique can be used when quantitative data is available. Quantitative numbers, human numbers. That means different departments, how many transactions between them, and the transportation cost and all. If we have numbers, we can make use of this technique. It says uh, the aim is to minimize non negotiable loads between departments. Non negotiable loads, you'll understand. So, uh, now, with a simple example, uh, we will quickly identify how to uh, how to use block diagram technique. Uh, in case of exam questions, all such information will be given. So you should know the steps to follow and do it. Right? In exam questions, information will be given. But in practical situations, if you need to do it on behalf of your organization, well, you will have to find these things. This and follow this step. Hope you can understand both. What information do you need? For layout plan. What information do you need? First of all, you should know uh, uh, it's available. Available like the 
dimensions of the building length width right and what is the available space you have to get it and write down and summarize things right you should know the details about the available space right now we have some question that will be given now it says uh, uh, there's a building uh, that is 60 feet long and 40 feet wide it says a simple example but practically then i have to get the dimension detail is the space of the building available? Then, what other information is there? Uh, you need to know uh, what are the different departments you are going to locate within the building. What are the different machines or other resources you are going to uh, uh, locate within the space? Some question that will be given. It says here there are six departments. There are six departments in a factory, and then uh, that you are going to look at. Then you should also know the space requirements of each department because this requirements may be very different. Now, in this case, that says uh, each department is 20 by 20 feet, that means. Uh, each department is same and space requirements same. That is to make the example simple. But practically, space requirements of each department could be different. We need to collect such information first of all. Then, of course, we need numbers. Numbers in the sense. How many transactions between departments? Okay. Then only we can use try as an uh, 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 log diagram technique. Okay. Uh, and then of course uh, to calculate the transportation cost, material handling cost, we need the transport cost estimates. In an exam question, sometimes transactions will be given, and in addition the cost also given. Right, so you can prefer, but practically, we'll have to get the information, estimate, and uh, use in that day of time. I hope that is clear. Now, it says uh, uh, between departments, when handling materials, the cost is one dollar per load between uh, adjacent departments, departments which are next to each other. Close by. Go through adjacent departments, one dollar per load, according to this. It further says additional one more dollar will go through other department, go to the non adjacent department. Likewise, this calculation, I mean, this is a very simple example. You can also think of complicated practical situations. Right. So to uh, uh, solve this, we have to follow these uh, uh, steps. First of all, we need to gather such information like uh, summary transactions. We call it from to matrix. From to matrix. Right. Like what you see here. This is a from to matrix. That shows the transaction summary between the parts. The exact question. This should be given to you. Practically, you will have to summarize and get the data. A matrix like this is called a two-way summary. You know, it's a two-way summary. Two ways. So that is easy. You are given a two way summary because uh, what I mean by two way summary? Well, now they have six departments here right? uh, assembly, painting, machine shop, uh, receiving, shipping, and testing. Right? 
Now, they have numbered it so that we can easily understand one to six. Now, say for an example, there can be transaction between one to two. Right. And at the same time, there can be transactions from two to one. In terms of one to two and two to one, right? So in a table like this, both are taken together. So it's if we take them separately, we call it a one way sum. But we can show the both way transactions together. Uh, it is called two way summary. Now, this is a two way summary which is needed for uh, our calculations. We need two way summaries. So, for this simple example, two way summary is given, right? So, between one to two and two to one, in between one to three and three to one. What is this? 30? How can you understand it? So, uh, that is transaction number of loads between 2 to 3 and 3 to 2. 30. What is this uh, 50? Uh, what is this 20? Between 3 and 4 and 4 and 3 together. Right. You will be given values here in this side of the matrix also, right? So that means that's one way summary. You have to add them to here and then finalize it to the two way summary. Right? I think uh, sometimes in exams, if such numbers are given, ah, then you should know ah, we need to compare, we need to add them together and finalize two way summary. But right. anyway, this is the two way summary. So that our calculations are easy. Then what we should do? We need to determine the space requirements. Hello, hello. You need to think with me so that uh, uh, you will be alive. You will be awake. So space requirement that is given in the question here. What is the space requirement? Six departments. Each department requires same space. What is the third step then? In for such simple techniques, some such simple uh, layouts, when we handle it manually, we use it, we use a technique called trial and error method. Even in the exams, if you are handling it manually, you have to use this technique, what we call trial and error method. So accordingly, we'll have to start from somewhere. We call it the initial plan or the trial. Initial plan. Or simply known as initial solution. Initial solution. So we'll have to start from somewhere. We call it the initial solution. You know what we mean by initial solution? A kind of random start, right? In the building, the building we know now, the dimensions are like that 60, 40, right? 60 feet and 40 feet, and there are six departments, each requires 20 by 20 space. So, this is how the building and the uh, space arrangement. Uh, what we mean by initial solution, we'll have randomly start from somewhere. Say for an example, I consider this as the initial solution. One, two, three, four, five, six, like this. I randomly place them there and I start from there. So we need the uh, initial schematic diagram. Okay. Now we start to improve it. This is the initial layout plan we are going to have. One, two, three, four, five, like that. No, in the rational basis, we randomly put it there. Are you with me? 
Can you understand what we are doing? We try to uh, identify the uh, layout plan. It's more, more accurate, depending on number of transactions. You should begin with something called initial solution, and then to keep improve it, we need to show the number of transactions on the initial plan. On the initial plan, like this. Now, between one and two, two way, one and two, what is the transaction total? 50. So we can show it like this. One and two, 30. So, and to 50. And then uh, one and three hundred. So uh, one and three hundred. So rather than going through it, and that is how we should show it. But to make it more clear, I will show it in a way like this. Hundred, one and three hundred. One and four, zero. So no need to show that because that is zero. One and five zero, so I'm not showing it here, but one and uh, six, that is 20. That means, in this way or that way, right? one and six, that is uh, 20. Now, in this type of uh, layouts, there are few assumptions sometimes. We call, now, this type of term, uh, uh, Material handling is permitted. We call it horizontal transportation. That is permitted. So sometimes both horizontal and vertical transports are permitted. That is possible. And in certain other situations, we assume the diagonal movement. Diagonal height from two to four, that is permitted. And one to five, that's also diagonal. Right. So such assumptions we make. See, horizontal moves are permitted, vertical moves are permitted, diagonal moves are permitted. So that is how if some specific instructions are given, we will have to follow. Otherwise, we follow, I mean we assume all three per moves are permitted. Write down something. Horizontal. Vertical, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal moves up. Vertical and diagonal moves are permitted. Oh, the hundred here, right? Although I showed it there, right, you can also do it in a way like this: one to three. If it, 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 it should go through two. Let me do it in that way, then, so that you can easily understand. And I will show you the. Uh, 20. So it has to come either to 5 and 5 to 6. So diagonal move is permitted, coming to 5 and then go to 6. And that is uh, 20. So likewise, we can show all the values here on the relevant initial, like what you see here. Actually, you can understand it. Even in this uh, handout, so that I don't complete, I'm not going to complete it. From where these values are taken? From the two way summary chart. This is the initial solution.
clear? Now, we randomly paste departments here. So now we try to improve it. That's why we call it trial and error. We now try to improve it. What do you mean by improve? Well, we try to change the places of departments. If some improvements needed, some improvements needed, how can you decide? Well, we now have to uh, look at the transactions. Uh, transactions between close by departs, adjacent departments, we call them adjacent loads. In the same manner, transactions between non adjacent departments, like one and three. We call them non adjacent loads. So we check whether there are non adjacent loads in our initial service. We assess whether there are non adjacent loads. Do we have non adjacent loads here in this initial solution? I what? Between one and three, between uh, one and six, between three and four, we have non addition doors. In exam questions, only the, if, the, if only the transactions are given, calculations are easier. Sometimes you will be given as in this example, the transportation cost aspect. So that you have to calculate the total transportation cost. You think that in the exam that will come, but if you are given transportation cost, you'll have to then calculate the material handling cost for the initial search. How to do that using an equation like this? Between one and two, like this, like one and two. How many transactions? 50 per load. What is the transaction cost? One dollar per load. So that between one and two, there will be fifty dollar. Can you understand it? In the same way, between one and three, what is the transportation cost? Coming from one to two, one dollar. From uh, two to three, one additional dollar. Right? So per load, two dollar. So for total hundred loads, hundred is two dollar, that is two hundred dollar. So likewise, for the initial solution, number of transactions, we have to calculate the transportation first. And add them together with the total transportation. According to this, that is $570. Now we should try to identify some ways, some improvements to this to reduce non mentioned loads, to reduce a total transportation cost. Is that possible? Can you identify how to do that? Well, this is the way you should think. This is trial and error method. One improvement at a time we can do. Right? So likewise, several improvements time to time. So we need to know from where to start. One improvement at a time. So if you are change the places from where you would begin, what is the key area you are going to focus on? What we try to do? Change the places of departments. So, which departments you would change immediately? To reduce non national loads or to reduce total transportation cost? How to identify starting point? As you can guess. Huh? You should be able to think in that way. Right. Uh, we should look at the highest non adjacent load here. We have to address first the non adjacent load. 
they are reducing. So what is the highest non-action load here? Okay, let me clear another. Hello. What is the highest non-action loads uh, between uh, departments here? One to three. Very simple. Between one to three. Right. So because that is one. If we can reduce it, how can how can how can we can reduce it? How come we can reduce it? By placing the close time. So that is very clear. That is the highest non-action load. Uh, in the next improvement, we try to adjust, address that by locating close time. So like what? Then we change it and then go for the next calculation and see how uh, whether we have improved it or not. You have a doubt. How many steps we will have to do it? How many rounds we will have to well, that's very difficult. That's very difficult. Even for a simple calculation like this, you'll have to go for five rounds, seven rounds, ten rounds. Right? So, practically, uh, we can do something like this. We can process two, three steps together if you if you can process it in mind. Not only one change, two, three changes in the next improvement, so that you can reduce the rounds. Now, let me give you an example. If possible, now, when you make this change, that is the highest non-action load, what you should keep in mind? Now, when you change the phases of one and three, what is the next highest value? That is between three and six. Right? We should make it a point not to change the relationship between three and six. If they become non action in the next solution, the next solution would not be appropriate. Right. So you consider at least these two information and do the improvement. And if possible, some more steps together. Right. In that way, can you uh, give it a try to change the phases of departments and come up with an improved layout? Give it a try. Give it a try. To improve the initial layout plan, initial layout plan, and change it to reduce knowledge thresholds. This is the initial plan. Now we are going to change the departments, places, locations to minimize knowledge. How you would uh, recommend? What improvement you would suggest here? An improved solution. What suggestions you would do? Check whether we would uh, propose a better one. Of course, different experts like you will get different answers. That's all right.
Make this clear. What are our intentions now? Bring one close to three. Okay? Bring one close to three while keeping three and six together. Right. Those are the two things we got right. And if you are capable enough, you can process more information and address some other issues also. Like now there is a non-mentioned load, there are non-mentioned load between one and six, twenty. If you can address that one also, that is great. And another non-mentioned load, uh, uh, three and uh, four. And while doing so, keep in mind, this is 50, one and two. So that you have to keep in mind. And then of course, uh, two and four, that is again 50. I find relatively high volume. So how you would change the place? We can do everything together in one step. So we go step by step. Make an improvement. So I decide to take one here and keep three and six as it is. Right? I mean, not the answer that you need to understand, but the thinking, the rationale behind it. Right. So my intention is to uh, address this 100 and keep this. Right. Now, while doing so, how the other spaces should be shuffled, changed? You can have a different answer, perfectly all right. Assume that I finalize in that way, so likewise you may have come up with a different solution. No need to match it. Now, to assess whether you have uh, improved it or not, what you should do again to on the transaction on the improved solution. I'm going to do it for my one, so as you can do it for your thing. Between one and three, it is one and uh, two fifty. One and three hundred. One and uh, two and three thirty. One and six fifty. Two and four fifty. Four and three twenty. Four and five fifty. One and six twenty. Uh, three and six hundred. Two and five ten. So like five, I showed it in my second improvement. Have I managed to improve it? I think yes. Why? In the earlier case, how many total non action loads? Hundred plus twenty plus twenty. Hundred and forty. In my disimprovement, uh, I uh, managed to reduce it to 20 now. 20. Sometimes you have been able to reduce it to zero. Good. 
Do they understand it? Big calculations, but you should know the steps. Show those values. Then only you practice it. You can't process everything in your mind. You can't. I put that into the layout and see if they have improved it. Anyone who could make it zero in the second attempt or third attempt? In the uh, uh, handout, the one you see here, right? in the next improvement, uh, change the departments. One, take it two there. Right? This is the improvement, revised version. Now, uh, uh, in the next improvement, they have been able to reduce it to 50, 30 plus 20. Next. This is better than the earlier version. Even if they calculate the material handling cost, uh, that has been reduced to 480. That means this is an improved solution. That solution I have been able to reduce to 20. Likewise, you will be able to make it simple. That is what we call trial and error method. Trial and error method. Uh, step by step, we try to arrive at the better look layout plan. Is it simple? For very simple assignment like this, this is possible. But real problems are very complicated, very difficult to manually handle it. But simple calculations, simple layout plans can be done according to manual calculations. Right. The second situation, I hope that is okay now. Just have an idea, that's enough. But be ready in case of exam questions. Sometimes you'll have to apply. Now here, very simple and straightforward, but practically you might tell some, you might be told, like the building, Building has some constraints, like this is the building available, and close to the entrance, there is this one, right? right. That you can't change. Department one should be located there. You are not allowed to change that. So, such constraints should be there. Right. Or oh, sometimes it says uh, uh, department five should be located there, you can't change it. So do other improvements, do other improvements, why keep you five there? Well, sometimes they might get uh, close to five, three should be here. Both three and five cannot be changed, those should be fixed. So only the other departments can be shifted. Like, if such is 
constraints are given, you have to just make sure in your improvement you don't violate these constraints. Right. Now, this is possible when we have data between department and then of course the, the transportation cost that we don't have movement. Assume that a new factory is planned that we don't have the number of transactions, previous transactions, numbers. So, in such situations, we cannot use this blow diagram in the Instead, we might use the second one, we call it relationship diagramming, which is a little different. Relationship diagramming. When on, no quantitative data available, but some uh, Experts so involved in this decision, they have their location preferences between areas. You know, experts, they judge, they have opinions, they have to place which one, right? Which places are, which combinations are ideal, which combinations are perfectly matched, which combination should be separated. So, likewise, not numbers, but Opinions, judgments of experts. There's a technique to uh, uh, use such judgments, we call it relationship diagram. I will quickly show you one example, one, one arrangement, and uh, move to the other one. So, for that, we use a technique called relationship charts or schematic diagrams for that matter. Relationship charts. A diagram like this. And then, of course, coding arrangement like codes. These codes are very simple. Simple to memorize as well. What are the codes used? A, E, I, O, U, and then X. That shows the relationship, closeness. Absolutely necessary. Especially important. Likewise, important, okay, unimportant, and there can be not desirable relationships. So, in the relationship chart that we develop like this, there are how many departments? Several departments accounting, marketing, operations, and all. And there are these cages, right? In a relationship diagram. Now, experts. We we'll assess the closeness requirement and assign the related code here. Take an example. Now this O here that refers to what? O here that is to the relationship between uh, accounting and marketing. Can you understand? O. What is this A that is uh, absolutely necessary between what and what? Accounting and operations. And what is this A? Marketing and check the handle and check whether you can understand. When you don't have number, touch points, expert opinion. We call it location preferential. Sometimes you will be given existing layout, right? Uh, this is the existing layout. This is where it's still seven departments are. And then also you will be given this, uh, this type of relationship uh, uh, charts with preferences. And you will be asked to evaluate the existing layout, whether that is good, so there are issues. And also recommend more appropriate uh, uh, layout. I don't know whether you understood it. 
for the understanding. Let me uh, let me quickly tell you how we do it. Now, for that, especially for coding, we use something called live code shifter. Live coding for A type relationships. We might use the five lines because that is absolutely necessary to indicate that type of relationship. We use five lines together. Uh, a it was E. We use four lines. Likewise, I O U and then X. Right. We use three lines here, two lines here, one line here. So we use a line coding system. And for X, uh, 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 not desirable, X type relationships, we will use zigzag lines. Now, assume that there's a department, there's a building that has a uh, one here, three here, four here, five, six, and two here. Right. This is how the existing layouts are. Existing layouts are. I mean, existing locations are. So you will be given, uh, ignore the seven mark, seventh foot cage, the, consider the initial six. Now show the values here on the uh, uh, existing layout. This is the existing layout. Can you follow me? Right. Now, say for example, uh, one and two O. Oh. Right. So one and two O. Oh. O oh, two lines. One and two. From where I got it? From the judgment. They are considered one and two O. For me, the keeping them is all right. Not necessary, but keeping them is all right. Uh, let's say uh, one and three, that is A. One and three, that is A. So uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, here, two and three, again A, two and three. Now, two and three, it should come this way, right? Two and three. Five lines. The light files for the other departments, you can show them on the existing. Can you? Now, if you have a better layout, what it should be? Hello, can you understand it? Hope you can understand. Better layouts, more efficient layouts should have shorter lengths for A type relations. Total length. Then total length for E type relationships. If the relationships are length or the distances are lengthy, that means there are problems are there. Now, another example like X type relationships. We don't have any X type relationship here, but assume that you see six and two undesired. Experts have turned into two and six undesirable. So you have to show it here like this. Six and line in the existing layout. So that means that is not acceptable. Then what do you have to do? Make some improvements. 
like what we have done earlier, change the phases to reduce the distance between A type relationship. Then give the focus to E, meantime focus on X type relationships and separate it. So likewise, that is the technique. I hope those who follow me can understand what the technique is for what purpose this is used. One thing is very clear. That is doing all these things in mind is very difficult. Isn't so? Even simple calculations like this, it will be challenging. So that is why there are uh, design software solutions, computer software. When you feed data, like space availability, space requirements, number of transactions, location preference, whatever, it generates alternative layout plans for you. Not trial and error method, but software. Solutions generate layout plans, alternative plans with all the details. Using, uh, uh, because that can be technique, trial and error method only works for small problems. For bigger problems, we can use some other advanced techniques like this. So, uh, pro planner, uh, Flow path calculating one such technique where it uses these steps to recommend you the best layouts. And what you see here uh, is uh, one such output generated from the system. Software solution. So it shows uh, what type of relationships the existing layout. So how, how can we optimize the layout? So like, even more advanced techniques like uh, uh, 3D visualization techniques are available as you are aware, so that the 3D layout can be created so that in the, in the output we can see how it looks like when you get into the layout. The exact dimensions can be included in the 3D version of it. Things have become more easier and more importantly, they can address all the uh, practical issues they have in the 3D model and then produce the real layout once you finalize it. And thereby you can overcome a lot of layout problems in factories, in offices, in service areas. These are heavily useful techniques. Is that clear? We talked about one thing that is a, a functional layout. And after a small break, we will uh, move to uh, product oriented layouts. Can it be around two five? Not more than that, by the way. We have 15 minutes plus three more minutes. I'll start by two five. Then four more than a full one. Five more than a full one. Then did you mention it? Why you all are sleepy all the time? Busy. Commitments. Late hour. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes.
In this case, in the initial fan, and this is considered initial fan. Now, according to this, we have put one here, six there. So now we have considered this is the layout. So in that case, any transaction between one and six first should come to two and then go to something like that. Otherwise, it should come to a final and go to six. So that is how the arrangement is. It's not rational to go from one to two and two to three and some back to six, right? Minimize it, we can uh, remember horizontal, horizontal moves, vertical moves, that moves, all three are permitted, right? So that it has to come from one to two, two to six, or one to five, or five to Which way? Yeah. Okay. Diagonal movement, but I mean, when the space is allocated like this, so uh, it can't go through the diagonal. So it has to come to two first and from two to six. Or else one to five, five to six. In either case, in either case, as you have correctly identified, per load, what is the transportation? Is $1. one dollar from one to two and two coming to two to uh, six to one more so that per load two so that for total 20 transactions 20 to two that should be four that should be four that should be four and was uh, i thought uh, from 20 to we were straight and such four Ah, right, right. But the arrangement would look like this. That is why the building space, the dimensions are important when making the difference. It has to come here and go there. Or it has to come here and go there. When uh, it won't be straight line. No, it won't be. It has to go through the departments. Right. The purpose of the building they can passage this. Like somewhere here there's a passage. Right? So that you can stay the way go there. So that that's about the distance there. So like Nothing is mentioned. If nothing is mentioned, so just assume that it has come from here. Thank you. Thank you.
dijo. I have another lecture starting from uh, three, right?
I have shared the side sheet, side and part that one. This could be a little more in topics to you people like uh, accountants or maybe your audit, uh, auditors. Still, you're following operations management subject. So there are operations management topics, right? So in the final paper, there are questions so you should be able to answer. That is a big thing you're following. <laughs> so you have to somehow manage. And later you will realize one day, uh, when, you, when you make use of some of these learning points, not the exact thing, but some of them really are good and useful. One way or the other. We completed one layout type, we call it uh, process oriented layouts. Similar resources grouped together. Let's quickly move to uh, uh, the other other day outside also. Now the second one we are going to cover uh, is uh, product oriented layout for people. That is different. I think name is new, but you know what it is. Uh, we call it product oriented layout. So we have limited time, so I will quickly move to uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, product layouts are used. So what type of processes? Basically, mm -hmm. continuous processes, and then of course, the mass processes are also used. Right? And can you see the line here? Right? Even for some of the batch processes, product layouts are used. Continuous and mass processes. Do you remember this? Mass processes. And the process uh, divided into small parts, and then uh, different workers or machines used for small parts. And at the end of the process, you get highly standardized, high volume. Same manner in the continuous processes, one standardized product, extremely high volume, 24 into 7. 24 into 7. For such as if one we use uh, black layouts, even in the batch processing, let's say now uh, places like garment factories, garment factories, large scale garment factories like in maize, fabrics, and all, you may see a kind of similar arrangement, little different, but product type layout because they process batches, right? But different production steps are arranged in a sequential line, that is what. So, uh, coming to uh, even for services for mass services, product layouts are used. You should be able to think in me and understand it now. Now, just quickly to uh, slide number uh, 19. To introduce you the characteristics of product layouts. Characteristics of product layout, product oriented layout, what we call it. Earlier one, process oriented, different products through different routes. Here, layout is a little different. 
in exactly something like this. So the building is there, and uh, departments or workstations are arranged in a way like this, what we call a sequential arrangement. Sequence? Sequential arrangement, one, one after the other. From a starting point to the end, and all the stations, all the departments are connected through the same route. Such an arrangement is called product-oriented layer that we see mostly in uh, large-scale assembling plants, assembling plants, assembly factories, or uh, continuous processes, electricity generation, oil refineries, flour manufacturing, so in such situations, we see this type of event from starting point to the end in a sequential manner. So uh, in product layouts, transforming resources, it could be the material or the product or customer or information, it goes through according to the processing requirements, convenience of the transformation, processing requirement, how conveniently. You can complete one step and move to the next one, move to the next one, like that. At the end, you get the out. Each product follows a pre arranged route. Pre arranged. Earlier case, different products, different routes. But here, every product, same pre arranged route. You will understand it now. For further reference, write it down somewhere. So that is what uh, product layouts are. Every item, material or customer will go through the same process. For the layout. It could be materials for the product for the customer. Let's go through. So as you see it here, that point. Now, now that this pre-arranged rule in which the sequence of activities that are required matches the sequence in which the processes have been located. So there are production sequence, production steps according to which they have been arranged. So transform resources, product to customer. Flow along a line of processes. Line of processes. This is why this type of layout is sometimes called flow layout or line layout, commonly known as assembly line layout, where the flow is clear and predictable and relatively easy to control. Where have you seen this? In which type of factories? When producing uh, standardized shoes. Garment factories and more often in chemical plants, automobile assembly, and all you see this kind of variety. Now, this is a paper manufacturing process. So, factories they have arranged the layout according to this sequence. Equipments and work processes are arranged according to the progressive steps by which the product is made. The path for each part in effect a straight line. I mean, the straight line I mean, it could be a straight line like this from starting point to the end, or it could be mostly U shape, or what they call, or inverted U shape. That has a starting point, and all the steps are connected. Or sometimes at a factory like this, even whatever the possibility, but still we call it a straight line. Why? Action moves through one straight line. Now, uh, have you seen this type of arrangement?
Well, this is a kind of manual process in which the layout is arranged like a product layout. Now, you see each pair is making some part of the product. And in the middle, there is this, what we call a conveyor belt, that is rotating. So this pair complete certain processes, certain tasks, and keep the product on the conveyor belt. The next pair, collect it, do the processing, keep that back on the track. And the next pair, collect it, do the processing, keep it on the track. At the end of the process, you get the final product. The study that is the most efficient production technology we have, we call it simply line array. That is what we see here in this layout. This is a manual process. Workers are using or workers are used. But at the same time, you know, this is the first time they have used it in production history, somewhere in the 1930s, 40s. In US to assemble, you know, four automobiles, to assemble four vehicles. So that was the latest technology by then. Because uh, they produced one standardized car, same design, same spec. So they assemble it in a moving assembly line like this. So the layout is like this. so all the vehicle components parts added to the main structure step by step at the end you get the finished car that is what we call product oriented layout yeah the production steps are arranged according to the sequential steps you know sequential steps step starting point today. Now, can you compare it with the previous one? Process oriented? Different rules, but here only one rule. Things have been evolved faster. Now, what you see here is a more uh, automated processor. Robo arms are finished in the processing and move into the next level. Likewise, at the end of the process, you get a final product. Um, but you see here it is more complicated assembly plant automobile and the, this one this is one of the Nissan's assembly plants high tech and this layout they say enable them to produce or assemble automobiles so fast so efficiently every nine minutes they get a finished car at the end of the process Every nine minutes, they get a finished car. The layout efficient. So, uh, I think we watched some uh, uh, videos on. Uh, Videos on the uh, line lines, I'll show you one or two again. Let's just go to assembly line. This is a little older video for you.
These are the components they take uh, under the assembly plans. The main part of the vehicle is that and then the vehicle part of I think we watched this video earlier. Uh, all of these products, you know, the white phone is assembled in the assembly. This one would be a good one. Uh, on the, the vehicle components are manufactured separately. Tires. 
such industries. Yeah, very, you remember a few days ago, a few days prior to the election, we had a Volkswagen factory open launching here. So see the assembly facilities there and here. So uh, if you go to uh, Indian factories or to Malaysian factories, uh, you will see uh, more manual operations. But still, layout is arranged in assembly line. And since we run short of time, I will drop it there. Uh, but what we will go to now, uh, other characteristics of uh, product oriented layouts are mentioned here. Uh, we can produce a variety, few variety only standardized products, but highly efficient. In each state, resources are specialized, not general purpose. Most of product layouts are high capital intensive. Even here we saw no machinery, automated processes are used. Now you should be able to understand these terms, right? Although you are coming from accounting background, auditing background, now you should be familiar with these terms to some extent. Uh, well, when the market changes, preferences and other changes, it's very difficult to change the production line, right? low flexible. Within the facility, within the layout, processing rates are faster. Actually, that is free array. They know the speed. You'll understand. Now, it says material handling costs are lower. You know why? Material handling within the, within the facility. That is lower. Why? Material is forwarded to the next step. Sometimes, as you saw, there will be a conveyor belt anyway going through. So, no additional efforts, additional expenses to transport the material. Same straight line. Our space requirements are low. So, we say product layouts are highly efficient, but can be used to produce standardized products, open standardized services. Uh, to apply to use uh, product oriented layouts, uh, we should have. Uh, Volume, that means the demand for your product should be high. Uh, for high equipment utilization. 
uh, product demand is stable enough, otherwise you can't justify why we need the uh, product layout. Another details. Supplying the raw materials and components uh, should be uh, adequate. Continuously produced. Right. Other advantages, disadvantages are there. The main advantage is the rapid throughput and then uh, uh, high efficiency. So we should know. Uh, what are the techniques used for this uh, product layout, uh, product layout designing? I will try to manage it within the remaining 20 minutes, but we will discuss it. Designing, <laughs> designing product layouts. Ah, what is the technique? Sometimes it can be a question like this. So I'm going to slide number 47. Uh, how to design product layouts? What is the technique used? As you see here, there are a few things I don't think uh, I let's see whether we can complete it within 20 to 25 minutes. Sometimes okay. impossible. Now, in an assembly line, this technique is called assembly line balancing. Have you studied it before? By any chance? Something called assembly line balancing. That is the technique. That is the technique. The other goal is to minimize the imbalance between. Uh, workstation in the layout. So the imbalance between the machines or the personnel uh, and while meeting the output requirement. The technique is called assembly line balancing. With an example, I will just uh, introduce you that. So for that, these are the steps to follow. These are the steps to follow. Start with precedence relationships, you will understand what it is. Simply step by step, sequential steps. And then we can have determined the cycle time. You should know what it is. That is the speed of the process. Uh, then calculate something called a theoretical minimum number of workstations. And for that, we have equations here. For cycle time, this is the equation in the next slide. For theoretical minimum number of workstations into the equation. With an example, you quickly understand. Uh, then we have to do the balancing. Sign in tasks into workstations. And for that, we use some rules. You will understand what they are and why they why we use them. And accordingly, finalize the layout. How we should arrange the workstations from starting point there. And to assess whether we have uh, uh, whether we have uh, proposed a better layout, we use something called uh, evaluation, and for that we use uh, an equation called efficiency ratio. That is, uh, it is you'll understand. Okay, so these are the steps to follow. With that example, you'll understand. I think for most of you, most of these things are new, but spend a little time, you will understand quickly. You think with me, you follow these steps, you will understand. Right. Uh, let's, I mean, in case of exam questions, everything will be given, but practically, if you are doing, you have to gather all, all the information. Right. Are you familiar with this idea, what we call cycle time? What is cycle time? In, a, in an SMD9, I think that is new. So, so this cycle will that is the speed of the process that you need to understand. Speed of the process, speed of the assembly line. To understand that, I will just quickly use this uh, uh, example. 
Now, assume that's an assembly line that has three workstations in the assembly line A, B, and C. Can you guess it? Can you understand it? Three workstations connected to each other, straight flow. So these workstations are parallel operating. You introduce a part with the main structure, process, and other parts come into the last bit, finishing it. You get the finished product from here. So the arrangement like this, all the workstations parallelly operating continuously. Now these are the task times for A two minutes, for B four minutes, for C three. Now assume you have a question. What is the total processing time of a product? What is the what is the total process that that means when new product? When you start now, how long it would take? Complete the total process. And yes, the flow time equals 2 plus 4 plus 3. So total 9 minutes would be taken. That we hold flow time. Clear? That we hold flow time, or even we call it throughput time. Throughput time. Total time. However, when the three workstations are parallelly operating, what will be the speed of the same design? It means, what will be the time gap between two outputs? That we call cycle time. Now, what will be the gap between two consecutive outputs? Should we wait nine minutes? To get outputs at the end or something else. What do you think? You need to understand this concept in order to understand what line balancing is and why that is needed. So, see answer? Three minutes. Okay, good answer. Why is that? There can be different reasons. What is, what, what is your reason? Ah, that is the last, last workstation. It can complete within it can be completed. So that one might think every three minutes we will be able to complete the output. That is, I mean, we feel like that. I appreciate that answer. But unfortunately, we won't be able to get products every three minutes. That's a good attempt. That is how we should think. You know, often uh, there are arguments like now three minutes, another argument like now there are three steps. So that total uh, nine minutes divided by three, you get nine. So you think every nine minutes, every uh, three minutes you get an out, which is also wrong. In cases, what will be the time gap between two hours? How quickly you can get out? Hello. When a process is arranged like this, for me, what is your reason? Okay, here there is a process, there's a workstation that takes four minutes, so he thinks. We'll have to wait for four minutes every time. Do you agree? How many of you think it would take four minutes every time? Only one hand or a few hands? Okay, two hands. How about others? There are two who thinks every four minutes we will be able to get out. Anyone thinking? Every two minutes we should be able to get because there is task that can be completed within two minutes. Any hands? 
in other group, normal batch, they were saying, uh, no, since this is operating continuously every minute, or if con continuously you should be able to get products. I think that way, but that is also true. What is the line gap? What is the speed? Anyway, do you understand this now? <laughs> okay. So what is this line gap? Well, the answer, correct answer is what he suggested. And the reason, yes, exactly what he suggested. Right. In an assembly line, we have noticed like this, the speed, or in other words, the time gap between outputs determined by the time of the activity that takes longest. This case that is task B and four minutes. So every four minutes we will be able to get output. We understand that. What might tell you how come although they process every five minutes, right? C will be able to come in within three minutes. So can't we expect within, within three minutes? Well, although they process within three minutes, would they get products every three minutes? They will get after four minutes. So after finishing, C will be idling, waiting for the another product one minute. Then only they get a product. Right? And then they take three minutes, so that, that is how it becomes four minutes. Understanding? That is the concept of cycle time. Right? That determines the speed of the process. Now, I hope that is clear. Considering that, is this a balanced line? Is this a balanced line? Balance in the same? All the workstations take in the same time. No. So we need to improve it. What happens in a process like this? You may have also come across some processes like this. Now, every two minutes, product some sent to the B. But they take four minutes so that there will be more stops waiting, work in progress here, accumulate. In operations management, we call such steps bottlenecks. I will not repeat bottlenecks. Where the things get stuck without moving. So if there are bottlenecks, that's a problem. You need to immediately attend to that. Otherwise, there are in the, see now there are bottle, there are stocks here, but C is idling. At least one minute each time. Without any task, they are they are idling. So this is not a balance line. We need to balance it. And for that. Uh, these steps should be followed. These steps should be followed. Is that clear? With a simple example, I will illustrate that. So for that, I move to the next. Uh, that is the uh, example here. You have 10 minutes, not then wasting it. It will take... Uh, hmm? 50. I'm going to this example. Now, this is for a uh, wing component of an aircraft, wing, right? That has to be assembled separately. And it says the in an exam question, such information will be given to you. And you have to use the equations and other steps. Practically, if you are handling it alone, uh, you will have to gather information and then use what information you need. Well, we need each and every task to be completed with column. Now, in this case, how many tasks? There were eight, uh, nine tasks. There are nine tasks. 
efficient growth. Hello, these are the tasks. What is given here in this column? Task time to complete each task. What is the time? Now, in the Excel question that will be given, if you have to do it, you will have to identify and estimate the time or calculate and specify that. Now, total uh, 65 minutes. That means one hour and five minutes, isn't so? Start from start to the end, it takes one hour and five minutes. In this color. This is called uh, task must be task must follow, task listed, uh, also known as precedence required. Precedence required. Precedence data, what they call it. Precedence required. So, uh, uh, what are those? Then it shows before starting each task, what are the previous tasks that should be called? Now, for task A, according to the details here, what is the precedence task? For task A, well, no precedence task. Is that good information for us? Yes. What does that mean? Well, no prior activity. So that could be the first activity to begin with. Understand it? So in the exam section, you should be able to understand. I mean, coming to second task, what is the uh, precedence task? That is A. That means after A, we should be starting. So right. Okay. Such information should be given. And then other production related details like how many production hours available per day or per week that should be given. And then, of course, we should know the output required. In this case, it says per day 480 minutes available for production. And within that time, we should be able to produce 40 units. That is the required output. Clear? Such information should be given. But practically handling, you need to gather such data and then do the simply. Right. So these are the steps to follow. First of all, we should show the precedence relationship and then do the other calculations. We have 10 or 15 minutes, but then we still let's quickly uh, draw the precedence diagram what we call it. What we try to do? We try to learn how to do line balancing. How to do line balancing. That begins with what? Precedence diagram. Precedence diagram. You will have to quickly uh, 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 work with me and draw the precedence diagram. For that, two for simple precedence diagrams, we use two uh, symbols. One is circle, we call it a node. That is to symbolize task. To show the flow, we use an arrow. That is to show the flow. Two symbols, node and arrow. and arrow would be used. So accordingly, we have to draw the precedence diagram for the data given here by the table. Each task, the node, so let's quickly uh, try uh, uh, draw the precedence diagram. 
will have to handle it alone in exam. So practice it. So from we have to begin. We should first identify we have to begin here. So anyway, we can look at the task and then the procedure's task. And but simply you can understand now oh, it is task A that we can start without any prior task. So I will just start with A. There is a starting point. We think of B before starting B, what we should complete? That is A. So that after A, we can start B. This is how we show it. After A, we can start B. So likewise, quickly move through the other task. I mean to see what is the procedure's task of C, that is B. So that means C should be started after B. So likewise, try to complete the rest. Give it a try. How about D? Hello? How about D? Well, after B, D should be completed. D after B. How about E? E after E, right? So that we don't have to worry about these two, three, right? So D somewhere here we can face. Right. Straight away, after completing A, we can start D. Can you understand it? So complete the rest. Could you complete it? Give it a try. E after. Sorry, it should be E, right? I have made a mistake. It should be E. Then, uh, if after P D. C after F. H after E. H after G. And then we have I after G and both G and I. Okay. You can have developed something like this that is given here. So this is the precedence diagram that we should begin. And we should show the 
uh, uh, task time also on the diagram so that you can easily follow. So for A, 10 minutes, for B, 11 minutes. So likewise, complete the task times. C for five minutes. D, four minutes. E, 11 minutes. So I just complete it. We'll uh, complete the rest next week. It's a very simple example. At least if you can manage something similar in exam, that is great. Next week, uh, we'll start from here and do the other calculations, and I will show you how the uh, say. I mean, the uh, line balancing assignments are done. And after that, I will just show you the other layout types, fixed position and hybrid layouts and face it off. I will create the submission link on the LMS today. That is for next week, me. Thank you very much. Take good care of yourself.